And I'm with Mike McGlone, he's senior commodity research analyst with Bloomberg Intelligence. This morning he released a fresh look at commodity ETFs, um, kind of how big they are, how they perform versus one another. I mean, generally over the past few years, as we know, commodities as a basket have not done terribly well, right? Mike, Correct. what are the yeah. sort of different ways to track it in ETFs that you're looking at? Yeah, ETFs, in the, the first way to start is the index that the ETF tracks. And the basic ETF, the basic index is, a, is the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. It's kind of equity beta put on commodities. So they claim that's that's kind of doesn't really work so well for commodities. And you can see some of the, and some of the charts will show the performance has been poor. The GSG tracks the the S and P GSCI, mm -hmm. and then there's the Bloomberg Commodity Index. Now Bl Bloomberg has acquired this index recently. That's really has the benefit of being second. It took what the GSCI did wrong and kind of made it smarter. It looked what commodities are cyclical, so it made sure it rebalanced, and it broke up each sector two thirds. So energy ags and livestock and metals and every year it rebalances and it rolls a lot less so it's had a better performance so that would be basically beta and then any index can beat that should be smart beta so and i should mention we have yeah. a table that looks at the yeah. at the various uh categories that you're talking about so that sort of is incrementally a little smarter beta and yeah. then there and then there are a couple of others that sort of up the ante and try to be even smarter beta right right so i would say the dbc which tracks the deutsche bank optimal yield index which right away thinks it's it tries to be better it's can basically would be considered smart beta but if you look at the previous chart historically the last five years it's actually been about the same performance as the bcom hmm. and then i would say kind of smartest beta or maybe performance focused would be the uh, USCI, the United States Commodity Index. That tracks the Summer Haven uh, Dynamic Index, hmm. which right away it's dynamic, but what it does is it picks commodities it thinks are going up and tries to optimize the, the role, and that can be not really considered beta. It's kind of trying to optimize performance. So uh, we also have a chart on the Bloomberg looking at these various, uh, various ETFs. Um, as I say, none of them have done great because uh, we have seen an underperformance over commodities over the past few years but you see the chart up right now um, and it, it's I mean there is a divergence between them particularly yeah. after the first leg down so yeah. is it sort of because of their construction that some of them tend to outperform or is it more just sort of the vagaries of the market sure the the smartest or the the, the performance beta is summer haven the tracks it's tracked by the USCI that's done the best and the GSG has done the worst, notably, given some benefit, you know, some um, is crude oil's collapse. So it's right. really highly energy weighted. But the trend I'm seeing going forward is a lot of the new commodity ETFs are focused on costs. So right now you see a total, that's the total ETF tracking commodities in the U.S. is maybe six billion. The new in ETFs launch are focusing on tracking the BCOM, basic basic commodities because people want that vig when it goes up at a low cost so for instance in Europe we have the source commodity index and I was just impressed with the ETF securities index they just launched the BCI tracks the Bloomberg commodity index at 29 basis points is basically about three times less than all the other ones. all right Mike gotta leave it there sorry Mark Mike McGlone talking to us about commodity ETF